Thank you so much for, um, you know, for coming to today's workshop and uh, having me to have a presentation for today's workshop as well. Um, so the title um, you know, for my work is a, a little bit long, right? Motion-driven motivic development using the Fusion models. Wow. So uh, before um, you know, getting into the technical details, technical details in a high-level manner, I would like to take the time to introduce myself to you first. Oh, yeah. So my name is Ronald Mo. Or Perhaps you can call me Ron because it's easier to pronounce for some reason. Um, so I'm from a computer science background. I, you know, basically I did all my studies in computer science back in Hong Kong. And um, you know, before joining the University of Sunderland as a lecturer in computer science, I worked in the, I mean, in the AI industry in Asia, particularly for AI music generation. Um, so uh, my research interests are basically related to music information retrieval, you know, mu music emotion, which is actually, or which was actually my PhD topic. And, um, you know, I'm also interested in machine learning since I, since I work, start working in the, um, you know, the AI music industry. Uh, by the way, I'm also a musician who played music, in particular played guitar professionally as, you know, in Hong Kong, you know, as a section player, studio musician, something like that. I also do some compositions every now and then, basically. But unfortunately, I don't have time to do that anymore right now. So anyway, so let's talk about you know, the work. I mean, I mean I'm going to give you a high level um, you know, kind of discussion or kind of introduction to my work. So all the you know, technical details like the mathematics and the stuff behind will be basically will not be here. So you know, instead of like providing you some terrible information, I'd rather give you some, you know, some insight into what I'm doing. Um, so basically, my work is centered in, you know, in um, generative AI stuff, which everybody talks about right now, like Ch uh, ChatGPT and stuff like that. So basically, um, uh, Gen AI or generative AI has been used for music creation by those big names companies like Google and Matter, you know, Facebook, you know, all these big companies. So I just like put like, a couple of um, you know examples here. So I mean, you can like, check them online very easily. I mean, um, you know, they technology that they use are sophisticated enough to generate some realistic music, but um, basically I would say then, you know, these technologies are not kind of like human-centered to some extent, right? Um, so um, in other words, the human involvement is usually kind of like negated, so you cannot see it um, you know, there. So I mean, that's more like the, um, you know, the motivation for this work, which is to develop an so-called interactive AI or human-centered AI you know, for expanding a motif generated by, um, you know, a human composer, I should say human composer there anyway, conditioned by a specific emotion, which is kind of like in line with what I was doing when I was doing my PhD, all right? So um, in particular, the model that I'm going to use is called the denoising diffusion uh, probabilistic model or simply diffusion model, all right? So here's more like a high-level, um, you know, illustration of the, uh, you know, the diffusion model that I copied from the original paper. So um, there are altogether two processes, um, you know, for the generation. So let, let me keep it simple anyway, uh, due to the lack of time, unfortunately. So um, you know, for the forward process, the original data, okay, which is not necessarily an image, which can be, um, you know, uh, uh, spectrograms, for example, you know, a music, uh, audio representation original audio signals, and also the symbolic music can be used for, um, you know, for generating, uh, I would say, novel data, anyway. So the forward process, I mean, the forward process here is pretty intuitive, which is to add noise iteratively, you know, uh, over the, the course of a specific time t. I mean, in other words, the noise, the random noise will be added to the original, for example, image or spectrogram to kind of like distort, you know, and eventually we'll come to the you know, the complete noise after time step t, okay? So this is the forward process. And the reverse process, or the, um, you know, the influence or the generation of music is actually the opposite, which can sort of like denoise the, um, you know, the uh, complete noise that you can see on the left-hand side and gradually becomes something that's very similar to the original one. So this is pretty much the idea that, um, you know, that's used in the diffusion model. All right, so like I said, um, you know, at the very beginning of this um, presentation, the idea for the motif generation is to kind of develop a motif generated by a human composer and kind of like involve the, um, you know, the emotion information to generate something that's novel and, you know, and at the same time, 
emotionally expressive, I would say. So the idea is to add the conditioning information throughout each like kind of denoising steps to kind of like take into account the information of such in motion. So it will give the, um, you know, the music composer, the human composer in particular, some kind of flexibilities to, um, you know, to generate something a lot more expressive, I would say, a lot more um, interesting. But basically the idea is something like that. So um, in terms of the methodology that I'm actually working on, I, I mean, this is not a complete work. Unfortunately, it still takes some time to kind of like develop the model. But for now, I'm, I'm, I'm actually working on this model to, you know, to kind of like test different kind of like options, to kind of like try out different options, evaluate them, examine them, you know, examine them to see which one is the best anyway. So, um, so first of all, for this um, work, the symbolic music or the MIDI in particular, uh, are basically used for developing the model, for training the model in a more like a deep learning context, all right? So a data set, uh, you know, will be developed, or actually is developed, you know, based on the information that we can get, like, from the community, and, um, you know, uh, and, and also along with the particular emotion label, I would say. So there are altogether four labels uh, incorporated for this work, which are happy, sad, calm, and angry which basically in line, or which basically corresponds to the four quadrants of the uh, violence and arousal plane, all right? <clears throat> so the original like, symbolic music are used as the input by embedding it to some existing model like music VAE. And um, you know, the original void process is exactly the same as the original, so I'm gonna skip that. Um, so for the uh, reverse process here in this work, um, besides like getting the original, I, I mean, the, not the, the sampled noise, uh, we also have the uh, conditioning inputs, which are basically some motifs, okay, which is actually a, a short version, or the, in particular the first two measures of the original data, along with the emotional label that we gathered for the data, I mean, when creating the data set. Um, so basically the conditional inputs will be embedded just like the input, and also basically the ideas, or I would say the framework, the reverse, pro I mean, the reverse process architecture is basically the same, as the original one, as an initial work, initial work, I should say. So later on, like, I mean, there are some kind of like uh, rooms for improvement when it comes to, for example, the reconstruction structure, uh, and also the loss function uh, that will be used, all right, so which we'll be discussing in a second. Uh, so basically, for evaluating the, um, you know, the output of the model, um, you know, subjective evaluations are not entirely sufficient, I would say, because, I mean, it involves like kind of human involvement. So, um, you know, the uh, listening test will also be conducted to kind of like get some subjective evaluations as well for this work. So finally, uh, I would like to kind of uh, highlight some uh, possible future works, even though it's not finished. I mean, it's more like an expansion of the uh, existing work. So, uh, I mean, the first obvious or apparent kind of expansion for this work is to kind of modify or optimize the model. For example, like, I mean, by incorporating latent diffusion model, which can kind of like speed up the process as far as the, you know, the influence process, it will kind of like improve the performance quite a bit, I would say. And also there are some other structures like the DF, uh, I mean DMAE here, okay, which was introduced by another paper recently, or not, not necessarily recently, but it should be in this year if I remember correctly. And last but not least, I would say different loss functions, for example, the perceptual loss can also be used to kind of evaluate the perceptual aspects uh, of human composers. So, um, you know, the next, uh, I would say the next future work here is even more interesting, which is to replace the emotion labels by bow feedback gathered by wearables, IoT, all these kind of like devices, I would say, all right? So uh, it would kind of like improve the human, interac uh, human computer interaction as well, as well as kind of like provide some kind of more accurate kind of representation of emotion when it comes to music uh, generation. So finally, thank you so much for having me here, and I would like to dedicate this work to my cat, which unfortunately passed away, which was passed away in August this year. So uh, I'm, I, I'm happy to like, you know, I'm happy to like uh, discuss with you any further information or collaboration by this email. So thank you so much and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you. Hi, thank Hi. you so much for this. And my question is actually twofolded. Like it's kind of like a two-part question. Like the first question is, what is the benefit? Like, what do you think is the benefit of using diffusion, for example, in this context over a transformer? 
because I feel like there are other papers that use transformers right. in similar contexts, and mm -hmm. I was wondering what is actually the benefit, you know, clear benefits of using diffusion. And uh, also, I was thinking, like, also connected to what old Becky was saying before and the other presentation. Do you see a model like these being used in real time, for example, <laughs> like in a tiny ML kind of approach in which you have some, for example, biofeedback, as you were also mentioning, inputted, yeah. and then the music kind of changing according to that? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for your question. I mean, yeah, for the, for the first question, the vision model is uh, chosen for this work because, I mean, it has been used for image generation and it outperforms the original kind of like, um, you know, the GAN, for example, transformer that you have mentioned. So that's why the vision model was used here. I mean, this is basically the major, uh, I would say, rationale behind that. Um, yeah, of course, like, I mean, you can like do the same thing. Ah, oh, I have to mention that because, you know, it, it actually pops up in my mind, but I, for, some reason, for some reason I forgot. Actually, you can use any other like generative AI models to basically achieve similar uh, result, I would say. Not, ne not necessarily similar perform level of performance, but, um, you know, as an, as an initial work, I would rather try, the, you know, the, basically the best possible state-of-the-art model to make it more, I would say, to make it more competitive. Uh, for the second question, the real-time issue, yeah, I would say this is possible to generate some kind of like real-time, um, you know, output, uh, you know, by training the model, by optimizing a little bit, for example, by limiting the input, you know, and also, I mean, that, that's actually one idea that I'm thinking about, because right now, by using diffusion model, it treats, like, the entire music piece as a whole, but how can we, like, kind of, like, chunk it up, or how can we, like, chop it up into different pieces and try to, like, come up, kind of, like, combine them or make them all related. I mean, that's a, a very interesting possible future work. And uh, yeah, and I, 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 I believe it's achievable by using this framework with some modifications. So thank you so much for your question. I'm just wondering about, uh, I, I've, I've been embedded in an affective computing uh, group for, for a long time. Yeah. So the, the quadrant uh, that you describe is yeah. pretty familiar. I guess when we're analyzing music, then usually the, calm, the arousal axis usually yeah. corresponds to um, uh, whether the music is loud and soft, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the happy sad axis is like, is it a major or minor key? Uh, so usually, um, I, I, I guess when, when, we, when we build models looking for latent dimensions, those are always the dimensions we find. So how will you bias your model to find something maybe different or more, more interesting to the usual suspects? Oh. That's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, so the reason why these four categories of emotions were pegged, because, I mean, they are highly related to my previous work, which is music, music emotion, um, you know, investigation. Um, you know, another interesting way of doing that is to use the violence and arousal, like, kind of scores to achieve that. I mean, which makes it become a, more like a linear regression model. Kind of, not, not necessarily or not exactly something like that. And, um, you know, just like what I said in the uh, future work here, um, you know, it's a possible idea to replace the emotion labels with some kind of our feedback. I believe this is a, a better kind of um, information that represent the, you know, the human emotion, uh, you know, instead of using the labels. Because the labels can be sometimes a little bit confusing. It can be sometimes a little bit hard to interpret, even though like using the categories. So I would say in the future work, perhaps, the, um, you know, the biofeedback or this kind of like, you know, human kind of like involved information will also help, you know, in the AI generation aspect. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's say thank you to Ron thank and you. thanks again to all our presenters. Thank you so much.